Hey everyone, I'm Willow and today I have my first little art supply haul for you. Well, <laughs> let's be honest, it is mostly for me. But I'm really glad that you're here and I'm excited to go through these supplies with you. I'm going to be starting with the smaller items and then working my way up to the bigger, juicier stuff. So stay tuned for that. And if you're ready, I'm ready. So let's go. Starting with a pencil. But this is not just any pencil. This is the Faber-Castell Matte Graphite 14B Pencil. The softest pencil that I had lying around to compare this to was the Derwent 9B. If you want to check out these pencils, they do come in a set on Amazon that's kind of pricey, but I just wanted to try the 14B and it turns out that Jackson's has these individually for just a couple dollars per pencil. So if you're already placing an order, I will have a link below so you can check that out too. By the way, I will have links in the description for most of these products. Any Amazon links will be Amazon affiliate links. That just means that if you use one to buy something, it helps me out and it's at no extra cost to you. The Faber-Castell matte pencil does have a bit of shine to it, but when compared to the Derwent kind of classic graphite pencil, that one almost looks like a mirror under my lights. Next up is washi tape. Starting with this MT washi tape. This is my favorite washi tape that I have found so far. It's definitely stronger than your average, but it is still gentle enough to not tear most papers. And normally I just use white because I guess I'm kind of basic that way, but I finally splurged because I couldn't resist this pastel teal color. I also picked up a three pack of the white that I already use, but in a smaller size. I also picked up this gorgeous washi tape from Amanda Mitchell on Etsy. I will have a link to her shop in the description as well. I'm not a big washi tape person, but I really, really wanted to try an illustration style similar to what's on this washi tape and I just thought having it would be a really great way to inspire me and kind of give me a reference for the type of vibe I want to go for. There's something so whimsical and almost Miyazaki about this washi tape and I just love it. This washi tape was the kind that you have to peel a backing off of, which is a little annoying to have to do, but I actually really appreciated it with this washi tape in particular. Um, I found it very easy to get the strip that I needed cut to the right size without it sticking accidentally to something and then peel the tape off and stick it down where I wanted it. It took an entire page of my sketchbook to swatch out most of the design and I still don't think I got the entire thing in there. So pretty. I don't know what I'm gonna use it for outside of this, but I just couldn't resist getting a roll. Do you like ASMR? Let me know in the comments because I could definitely do some ASMR videos in the future if you're interested. Next up, paintbrushes. These are three paintbrushes that I've had my eye on for a while. Starting with my very first black velvet silver brush. I see these everywhere. Everyone loves them. So this is my very first one. It is a quarter inch striper brush. I believe online it's listed as a dagger brush. And I'm just very intrigued by this particular brush shape and I can't wait to use it and see what kind of effects I can get. Next up, I've really been wanting to do more line work with wash and watercolor, but I don't have very good liner brushes, so that's what these are. These are the Raphael Precision Brushes, and you'll notice that these are quite different in terms of length. One was listed as long, one was listed as short, and I was like, I don't know which one is better or which one I'm gonna like more, so I tried one of each. And of course, if you have brushes, you need things to use those brushes on. So we've got the Strathmore 400 series watercolor sketchbook. This is a sketchbook that I see a lot of art YouTubers using, including Jane Beata. She's one of my favorite watercolor artists here on YouTube. I believe it is just cold press cellulose paper. However, what I like about this sketchbook is that it does lie quite flat and it gives you so much surface area to work in. So definitely look forward to me filling this up on camera soon enough. I also picked up a pad of the Canson Moulin du Roy 100% cotton hot press watercolor paper. This is another product that's recommended by so many art YouTubers. And in fact, I thought that the Moulin du Roy watercolor paper had been discontinued for a while because you couldn't get it anywhere. 
but then I saw it on Jackson's and just had to pick it up. Definitely looking forward to trying this one out and I'm sure it will be in a video soon. Next, I picked myself up my very first Kirby Rosanna's coloring book. This is the Mythic World Color Timeless Legends book. I've seen so many artists lately using watercolor, especially in Kirby Rosanna's books. Her pages are super thick. Listen to this. So I'm really excited to maybe do some watercolor washes and then add highlights and details using colored pencils and other supplies. So if you're interested in seeing some coloring book pages on this channel, please drop a comment below so that I know that's something you are interested in. I'm just gonna keep scooching stuff this way and hopefully I don't run out of room over here. Next, I've got these Posca pens, which I know they probably aren't that exciting to you as a viewer, but so far I've only had a white Posca pen for doing some highlights, and this is my first 12 color set. Even though it's just the classic 12 colors, you see them everywhere. I cannot wait to use these, so stay tuned. I'm sure that they will find their way into a video very soon. All right, we are just about to get into the real juicy stuff. But first, I have to show you the cheapest item that I bought and also one of the ones that I'm most excited for. This dot card is like 11 cents on Jackson's Art Supplies, so it is just a tiny little sample of the paint. But it is my first time trying Daniel Smith watercolors or really any artist grade watercolors. As you all know, I use a pretty cheap watercolor palette. I think it's a decent palette for the price, but this will be my first experience dipping into real artist grade, actually has the pigment information on it kind of watercolors. And I am pretty stoked about that. All right, the most anticipated item that I ordered. Are you ready? The Caran d'Ache Neocolor 2 Water Soluble Wax Pastels. I have wanted to try these Neocolor 2s for about half a year now. I think it was close to $50 for this set of 30 colors. So that's pretty expensive for a set of crayons essentially, but these are very special crayons. And I did pick up a few individual open stock colors just to expand this collection a little bit more. I picked up the moss green, the apricot, and their flesh, which is a pretty limited uh, idea of what flesh is, but whatever. And I do have one other little thing up my sleeve, but wait, there's more. Ta-da! I know what you're thinking. What does a cheap plastic cutting board have to do with art? Well, let me answer that. I actually saw that Karen Dash makes an item quite similar to this that has a slightly rough surface on it. So the idea behind this is that you can take your Neocolor crayon or if you have a water soluble pencil or anything else like that, you can actually scribble it onto this surface like you would a palette. And then you get yourself something like this one inch stencil brush that I picked up from Blick. If you use it in a circular motion to pick up the pigment and then apply it in a circular motion on your paper, you can create a very soft and blended effect. So I'm very excited to try this technique and see if I can incorporate some fun gradients and backgrounds into my art. So I will have to do a more in-depth swatch of these Neocolor 2 crayons as well as my new um, palette as it were. So if you are interested in seeing a dedicated swatching video, please drop a comment below so that I know that's something you're interested in. Or if you are not into swatching, in that case, let me know which of these supplies that you've seen today that you are most excited to see me use in future videos. Thank you all so much for watching. If you made it this far into the video, please give it a like. And if you like seeing art hauls and unboxings like this, you do not want to miss last week's video where I got to collab with a bunch of other art YouTubers on a mystery art box challenge. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.